a classic photograph, a revered painting, just two examples of human genius that no machine could ever match. Or could it? Here's David Pogue. For years, the common wisdom about robots was that they're taking over repetitive, routine jobs. But at least they're not creative. We'll always have art and music to ourselves, right? Wrong. I'm going to show you a machine learning model that learned to draw. Douglas Eck and works at Google. I want to point out he created the Magenta Project, dedicated to using artificial intelligence, or AI, to make art and music. Why don't you start drawing some rain, and it'll complete your thought for you. And there it goes. And it's, it's making it rain for you. Oh, it's making additional lines. The idea that this model has figured out that once it sees a cloud, that we're going to add rain. Eck is using a form of AI called machine learning. His software analyzed thousands of sketches done by people, and now it knows how to complete a drawing that I start. If I made little teeny drops, you can see it's doing it already. It's going to match the size of your drops. How? Wow. But Doug Eck's first love is music. This time, he fed his software the data from hundreds of live piano performances so it could learn to compose its own songs. <laughs> it's like Beethoven in a blender. You're beaming like a proud papa. <laughs> this, I, I do like these. That's my kid! <laughs> exactly right. Eck insists that the idea here isn't to replace human composers, it's to help them. For example, when you get writer's block and need a little creative boost. And so it's your idea, and then what the computer is doing via the machine learning is generating some new possible endings for you. So you say, but the genie may already be out of the bottle. It will write the music, perform the instruments, and then produce the overall audio. Sam Estes and Michael Hobie worked on film scores for years before they and a buddy founded Amper Music. Their software is aimed at filmmakers who might not have enough time or money to hire real musicians. They say they've taught their software human concepts like music theory, rhythm, and pitch. They started by making individual recordings, one note at a time, of every instrument playing every note of the scale at every volume level. From there, the software can piece together original film music in any style you request. I'm going to act out a scene from a movie okay. that, uh, that's six seconds long. Six I challenged their software to compose the music for a short cinematic scene. It's, it's me being a thief in your office. Let's say we want like dark dramatic. OK, right? good. And we'll see what it comes up with. All right. Say action. Ready? Yep. Action. Hey, that worked pretty well. Yeah. And just like that, background film music composed just for the occasion. No human composer required. We're not trying to replace musicians. We're not trying to place composers. Well, your, your goal might not be to displace composers, but of course you're going to. Yes. The, the, unfortunately, there is, with any disruption, in a space, you're going, to, you're going to displace some people. AI may also start to cause disruptions at art galleries. This screen is uh, actual art from art history. Professor Ahmed El Gamel at Rutgers University has spent five years teaching his AI program to create original artwork, once again through machine learning. He fed it 80,000 pieces of art from the last 500 years. Now he presses the Enter key and boom. The software creates new, original works of art. The machine just take the images and it try to learn by itself what makes a good art. But are they good enough to fool us humans? The professor gave me a test of 20 paintings. Watch me be the first to ever ace this test. No, to really. see if I could tell which were done by people really and which by well. AI. Do you think it was created by an artist or computer? Clearly, computer. Next. Whoa. Goldfish in the Blender by Rorschach. All right, last one, the Inkblot. Submit. I failed the test. Almost everyone does. Two-thirds of the time, I couldn't tell which paintings were done by human artists. But did it matter? 
This one sold at auction for $16,000. But Google's Doug Eck says that real art still has to come from people. It's immediately boring to sit back and say, hey, I've got this thing that makes music. Let me push the button one more time. It just doesn't engage us. That's because that's not what art is about. Art is about us communicating with each other. And so you know, we need to be there.